Hi everyone, I'm going to try this again. I'm having some serious audio problem uh, in my previous attempts with my computer, and so I'm not going to try with my computer now. I'm going to try uh, with my phone. What I was attempting to say earlier was uh, this morning I've been thinking a little about prayer. Uh, prayer is one of those philosophical quandaries for me. On the one hand, God calls for prayer in the Old Testament and the New Testament people pray. On the other hand, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, there is this absolute conviction that even before we speak, God knows our needs. That even before the words are formed on our lips, God understands what it is that uh, are the deepest longings of our hearts. And so the quandary for me has always been, well, if God already knows what I'm going to say, then why pray? I think where I've landed over the years is that I believe that prayer is a way that we make ourselves available to God, and it's a way that we pause and we recognize God's availability to us. Let me say that again. Prayer is a way that we make ourselves available to God and where we pause and we consider the reality of God's availability to us. And so prayer is uh, part of the Christian life in such an amazing way. Uh, when I think of how to pray, Jesus' disciples asked him explicitly, Lord, teach us to pray. And he gave the beautiful Our Father, which art in heaven, prayer that is a model for us whenever we don't know what to say. Whenever our words are failing us, that is always a prayer to which we may go. And, by the way, uh, these days, give us this day our daily bread might well take on a meaning it has not taken on for, for many, many years and maybe even several generations as we, as we just think about where we are as a culture and where uh, our brothers and sisters across the world are having experiences that they have not previously had. Prayer. I try to do it each morning. I try to do it each evening. And for me, there are two different kinds of prayer. First, there's the conversational prayer that I engage with, uh, engage in with God um, throughout the day. Just gratitude for something beautiful that happens, uh, a particular need that I feel, someone that I am uh, concerned about. It's just a conversational ongoing, never-ending dialogue. On the other hand, there are also the prayers of the church, the prayers of the church which are spectacularly beautiful, and sometimes my own spontaneous prayers uh, don't do God justice, don't do the relationship between God and people justice. And so there are the more formal prayers that I will use uh, in order to, to open my mind to the new ways that God is doing his will in the world and the ways that God's people for many, many years have prayed that God's will would be done. So with respect to prayer, first, as I said, I, I think it's an interesting way to conceive of it that prayer is making ourselves available to God and pausing to recognize God's availability to us. And it's also good for us to remember that Jesus has given us a prayer, and the prayers of the church, the prayers of uh, so many of the faithful people that have gone before, uh, the prayers that men and women of strong faith through the years have prayed, those can be our prayers also. And I pray today that you would make a time and a space. I saw earlier this week that more Americans are praying now than admit to praying for a very, very long time. Well. For some of us, uh, there's isolation. For others, there are family members on top of family member. But regardless of what situation you're in, I hope that today you can find a way to get off by yourself, to make yourself available to allow God's presence to be made known to you, and to let God be available to meet your needs to address your fears, to give you strength, to make you holy, and to make you whole. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.